Hi, this is uh, the second lecture of uh, discrete mathematics. Okay, so this lecture would cover uh, more connectives. Uh, we will look at implication and equivalence, and also we will talk about uh, quantifiers. All right, so let's have a quick review. So um, uh, we we talked about uh, proposition. So a proposition is a statement, which is either true or false. Okay. And uh, to save space and to make it clear, uh, we often use uh, variables to uh, to represent uh, propositions. For example, we would have p here, okay. And we can use connectives to combine variables to get uh, propositional forms. Uh, for example, you have a conjunction here, which is uh, p and q, and you can have disjunction here, p or q. And you can have negation, which we would pronounce like not p. And these are the uh, truth tables that uh, represent all these connectives. And the, the value of the proportional form uh, with these connectives depends on the value of uh, its variables. And for example, uh, if you look at if uh, you look at n here, uh, it's true if uh, both of the variables are true. So uh, in this case, it's only true in this uh, line, and if you have R, then uh, it's only uh, it's true when at least one of the variable is true. So the only case that uh, P or Q is false is when uh, uh, both of the variables are false here. Okay, and finally you can have not P. So if P is true, then not P is false, and if P is false, then not P is true. So this is a quick recap on what we did. Alright, so before we continue, let's uh, have a quick uh, practice. Um, uh, so uh, as I said before, the truth value of the proportional forms uh, usually depends on the values of its variables. But you can see in this exercise that sometimes uh, the truth value of the, the proportional form does not uh, depend on the value of its variables. So let's use the, a truth table to find the value of these two uh, proportional forms here and here. Okay. So if you watch the, uh, the video on YouTube, you can pause and uh, try to do it yourself first. Okay, so uh, let's uh, so let me draw you a table and then uh, you can pause. Okay, so you have only one variable, so the variable is here. So um, so there are two possibility, right? So it can be true or false. Okay, and and let's have not p here. So not p is uh, false and true. Okay, now let's try to compute p that's one thing so uh, p or not p okay so let's uh, you should pause the video now so that you can try to work it on yourself by yourself all right so I hope you did uh, okay so if you fill in you can see that uh, if you have P and not P, uh, because um, uh, in any in both case, um, at least one of the the terms here is false. Therefore, the P and not P is going to be false. And if P or not P, at least one of the term will be true. So this is always true. Okay. So um, yeah, you can see that no matter what values to of the variable p, um, these two two uh, proportional forms remains uh, either false or always true. Okay, we have a name for it. Okay, so for a proportional form where um, which is always true, we call it a tautology, and for for those which are always false, we call it, we call them a contradiction predictions okay so these are uh, a few terms that you might notice now all right so let's look at uh, another important 
um, connective. This is an implication. Okay. Um, so this this stand for if p then q. It's very important uh, proportional forms because you you're gonna see it all the time, and sometimes kind of it confusing a little bit. So let's look at it. Okay. So let's try to uh, try to uh, figure out its uh, truth value using the a, tr a truth tab a truth table. Okay. So um, this say when p is true, q must be true, right? So if uh, in this case, so let's look at that at, at truth table now. So let's consider the first case. So if p is true and q, q is true, then his p implies q true. As it said, right? It say that if p then q. So if p is true, q then tr is true. So this is uh, consistent with p implies q. So in this case, I I would say uh, p implies q is true. Okay. So let's move on. Um, so now, if p is true and q is false, so can we say that this sentence is true? Now, this sentence guarantee that uh, if p is true, then q must be true as well, right? But it turns out that q is false. So in this case, uh, this sentence, this uh, proportional form is false. Okay. Now things become a little bit more. Uh, interesting when when we look at the case when p is not true okay so if p is not true but q is true so is this uh implication true or false if you if you look closely this only say that uh, this statement only guarantee that um the case that q must be true right only when p is true uh when p is true okay um it doesn't say anything when p is false Right. So in this case, uh, we would say that uh, okay, uh, it, this statement is still true. And also, when if p is false and q is false, then this statement is also true. Okay. So these two cases are kind of like puzzling a little bit. Okay. If you look at it the first time, you must you probably feel like what? Yes, you're right. Um, when when p is false, uh, we say that um, p implies q is is true. Okay. Um, in that case, we say is that uh, this statement is vacuously true. Okay. So um, when you look at if, then in this case, uh, we usually say that p is an assumption and q is the conclusion or the result of the assumptions. So um, if the assumption is false, then whatever happens, we say that uh, this statement is true. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I know it's a little bit puzzling because uh, because the way we use and we the way we try to be strict than uh, what natural language usually says. Okay. Um, so when we say when we talk with your friend when you say if p then q we usually mean something more than than in the logical expression here okay so let's look a little bit further okay uh, one explanation for this is that if you look closely at what it means when we say if p is true q must be be true is that um, this statement only currently only talks about the case when p is true right it, it only consider this case. So when p is not true, this statement doesn't say anything. So so if if we say that this is true, then it's it's okay with the case that if q is false, when p is false, right? Because this statement doesn't say anything about the case when p is false, or or if q is true when p is false, it's also okay with these statements as well because. Because it only say the case, it only consider this case. Okay, so this is how usually uh, the mathematic mathematical language is somehow stricter than uh, natural language. Okay. All right. So um, we can write when when we have uh, when we when we have a sentence that usually say if p then q, then we we write this. Okay. But sometimes when we read the text, when we re when we read the conditions, 
uh, the implication p implies q can be written in in many ways. Okay, we can write uh, q if p. You switch the order, or you can say p only if q, or or uh, when when p then q. Okay, so um, let's have a quick check here. Um, so for each of these statements, define uh, proportional variables representing each of the proposition inside the statement and ri write the proportional form of, of the statement. Okay, I would uh, do one of the se sentence for you, and then uh, you should try to work it on yourself. And that's it. that's it for the first video. Okay, so in this case, so let's first uh, figure out where uh, the sh where should we define uh, proportional variables. So one of that is here, right? You do not have enough sleep. Um, so let's try to make the positive uh, proposition. So let's call p, say p is equal to you have enough sleep. And the second one is you will feel this during class, right? So let's say q equals you feel is so this statement is is what is not p implies q okay so that's that's easy right um so let's uh, you should try to work on this too by yourself i'll give the answer next in the next clip all right thank you